What if I told you there's a way to detect exactly when something enters the screen? So you can create beautiful scroll animations like these. Or even improve your website's performance by loading data based on the use of scrolling. And while this may sound complicated, it's actually very easy to get there once you've learned about the Intersection Observer. It works in all modern browsers without complex animation libraries or constant scroll checks. So let's learn everything about it in just a few minutes. But what actually is the Intersection Observer? Basically, it allows you to observe a target element and then run code when the target enters or leaves the viewport. That means as soon as the element appears on screen, you can trigger an animation, load content or anything else you want. And when it leaves the screen, you can respond to that as well. That's it. It is very simple, but very powerful. So let me show you exactly how this works. Here's a simple portfolio page with a few sections, nothing too fancy. Now, when I scroll down to this section here, I want the images to fade in smoothly as they appear. So the page feels more dynamic and engaging. Let's jump into the JavaScript file. Here we set up the observer, create a variable and assign a new intersection observer. The constructor takes two arguments, a callback function and an options object where you can fine tune the behavior. But for now, we'll just leave it empty. What really matters is what happens inside the callback function. And here's where things get interesting. Because this function will run whenever the visibility of an observed element changes. So when the target enters the screen, the callback runs. And when the target leaves the screen, the callback runs again. This function receives an entries array. Each entry is basically a status update for one observed element. If that sounds complicated, let's look at this example. Let's say I wanted to observe this section here called my work. I simply grab that element in JavaScript and call observer.observe and pass the element. So we tell the browser to keep an eye on the work section. As soon as we start observing, the callback fires instantly when the page loads. Then when I scroll down to that section, it fires again. If I scroll away, it fires once more. So whenever the visibility changes, the callback runs. Pretty cool, right? Because now we can use that callback to write the logic for what should happen when the element becomes visible because that is what we want to animate. For this, we use the properties inside the array. Each entry comes with some important properties, but we mostly care about two. The target property, which is the actual element we are observing, and is intersecting, a boolean that tells us if this element is currently visible on screen. So inside the function, we check if the element is visible. We access the entries array at index zero, because right now we're only observing one element, the work section. So the array just has one item. Then we check is intersecting. If it's true, it means the element is in view. So we can simply play our animation. But how can we do that? To make that happen, let's just add a class to the work section and then we create a transition in CSS. So when the element is intersecting, we access the target property and add the class show images. The cool thing about the intersection observer is that it also runs when the target leaves the viewport. In that case, we want to remove the class again using an else block. By the way, you can also write this in just one line of code without an if statement. For that, use the toggle method and its second parameter. Now to the exciting part. Let's create a simple fade in effect in CSS. So by default, I have to move them to the left using the translate property. I'll also set the opacity to zero. But as soon as the my work container gets the class show, the images should return to their normal position. And of course, don't forget to add a transition. Now watch what happens when I scroll. As soon as the section comes into view, the images fade into place beautifully. And here's where you can really get creative. In CSS, you can change everything you want, make the elements scale, rotate, change directions, or even add transition delays for a staggered effect. The possibilities are endless. So right now, our animation works great, but there's a little problem. The callback triggers as soon as the slightest bit of the work section comes into view. That means the animation can start way too early before the images are actually visible. But what if we could just tell the browser, hold on, and don't start until a bigger part of the section is on screen? Well, we can, and that's where the options object comes in. It gives us full control over when the observer should trigger. The key setting here is the threshold parameter, which can be a value between zero and one. The threshold makes sure the animation runs only when a certain amount of the section is visible. For example, when half the section is visible, or even wait until it's fully in view. By default, it is set to zero. So the moment the tiniest part of the section peeks onto the screen, the callback runs immediately. But if I set it to one, it will only run when the target is fully visible. That means the entire work section has to be on screen before the animation can play. And as soon as one pixel leaves the screen, the images fade out again. This way, the effect happens right when the viewer can actually see the content. However, this example really only works well on larger screens, 
On smaller devices, only part of the section might fit on the screen at once, so we'll need a smaller threshold to trigger the animation. But there's still one problem. Right now, all the images animate at once. That is because we're observing the entire work section. So as soon as it intersects, every image inside gets animated. But I really only want to animate the image that is currently visible. So to fix this, instead of observing the whole section, we simply attach the observer to each image individually. So first, select all the images using the query selector all, and then loop over them with the for each loop. Here we observe each image separately. Inside the observer callback, we now have to make a small change. Since we are observing multiple elements, the entries array may contain more than just one item. So we iterate over all entries and check if each one is intersecting. And if it is, we add a show class to that image. If it's not intersecting, we remove that class again. Now we also have to modify the CSS code a bit. Since we're no longer targeting the entire work section, the show class should be applied directly to the image element. If an image has the show class, it should be visible. Otherwise, it stays hidden. Perfect. Now, as soon as I scroll, each image animates individually. But there's one more issue. What if I set the threshold to 1? Because I only want the animation to play when the image is fully visible. Well, that is where things get tricky. If I set the threshold to 1, suddenly it doesn't seem to work at all. We can see it properly if I set the opacity to 1. The images aren't actually fully on screen because of the translate property we're using in the transition. But when the threshold is set to 1, the target needs to be fully visible. That's not the case right now. One way to fix this is to use the root margin option to adjust the viewport area the observer uses. The root margin works just like the CSS margin, but instead of changing layout, it changes the trigger area for the observer. By default, it's 0 pixels, which means the trigger area is exactly the same as the viewport. But we can use positive values to expand it, or negative values to shrink it. And just like with margins, you can pass up to 4 values. Top, right, bottom and left. In that order. In our case, the translate property is pushing part of the image outside the viewport on the left. So we can expand the viewport to the left by a few hundred pixels using the fourth value. Now the animation works exactly when we want it to. But we can also go the other way, using negative values to make the viewport smaller. Let's remove the threshold property for a moment and do it only with the root margin. If we want the animation to start later, for example, only when the image is fully visible, we can shrink the viewport from the bottom. To do that, we set the third value to a negative number. By setting it to negative 400 pixels, we're shrinking the viewport for the bottom by 400 pixels. So we're basically removing 400 pixels from the bottom, while at the same time adding 400 pixels to the left. In short, root margin is an easy way to resize the viewport and control exactly when the observer triggers. Another super common use case for Intersection Observer is to load data dynamically. For example, when creating an infinite scrolling page. Imagine a list of blog posts coming from a database or API. You don't want to render hundreds at once. Instead, you load them in small chunks as the user scrolls. In this example, I will keep it very simple using to-do list items. When the user scrolls to the last item in the list, I want to add 10 more items. For this, I have a very simple function that creates 10 list items and appends them to the list. Now to load more items as we scroll, we need to set up the intersection observer again. Then we select the last item from the list, either by using the query selector, last child, or the last element child property from the URL. We observe this element and check if it is intersecting. Since we are only observing one element, the last to do, we can access the entries array at index 0. If it is intersecting, we call our function to load more to dos. When we save this and scroll down, more to dos are added to the page. Great. However, this only works the first time. When we scroll further down, we don't get any more elements. And that's because the last item has changed, but we're still observing the old one right here. So we basically have to move the goalpost and observe the new last element instead. We do this by first stopping the observation of the current last item using the unobserve method and pass the target. Then we observe the new last item by calling query selector last child again. Now when we save and scroll, new elements keep loading again and again. So you can see how the intersection observer can be used in many different cases. If you enjoy learning JavaScript concepts in a quick and easy way, Subscribe to the channel and watch this video to dive deeper. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.